Good afternoon, everybody on Educated Economist Air. So I had a request to do a video talking about the gold standard, why we are no longer on a gold standard, what it would take to go back to a gold standard, and if we can't, why? Now, this was a really good question to think about because I hear a lot of people saying that we should go back to a gold standard or if we had a gold standard, things would be a lot better. And in a lot of ways, it would be. Um, one of the things that would be a lot better is the price stability. Like the money that we earn would actually have a purchasing power going into the future. So if you saved money today, it would have the same purchasing power going into the future. And that's what the gold standard really provides for, for the people. There is only so much currency out there and there's only so much goods and services out there. And when you have the two fighting for for a position, generally what you're going to end up finding is that the gold standard is going to be a very stable currency provided to the amount of goods and services that are out there. Now, when you have a fiat currency, you got all these wild swings in far, as far as prices go, but then you also have the capabilities of adding and subtracting from the currency as much money as you want. So that leaves the price stability not there right? Because there is no price stability anymore when you can just produce as much money as will. So really the gold standard, that's what it does for the people. And that's really what they are looking at when they say, why don't we go back to a gold standard is they really want that price stability. They want their purchasing power going into the future from the, from the money that they have earned today. That's really what it comes down to. The only problem with going on to a gold standard is, is that it creates a concentration of wealth. So as those who figured out how to make money, how to profit, and they start to profit and secure that wealth by saving it, what they are doing is they are pulling currency out of the system. And the more they do that, the less currency there is in the system, right? So the money itself, right? Because money is currency when you think about gold, right? Currency in a fiat standard is different. Currency and money are two different things. But back in the gold standard, money and currency were the same thing. So as you were pulling the money out, you were pulling the currency out as well. Well, in a fiat currency, as you are pulling the money out, you can add more money, right? So there isn't this like wild business swings that would end up taking place as you have a concentration of money, slows the business down because there's not enough money out there for everybody to have. Then that concentration of wealth gets redistributed back out there again. And then the whole business cycle starts over again. Well, when you're talking about a fiat standard, you're talking about a debt cycle that's taking place, right? So as you have the interest rates low when people expand the amount of debt that they're taking out, then they go out there and spend that money out there into, into the economy, the commerce does whatever. Then you have a contraction of that situation. They pull the money out. You have the contraction of the, of the system. You have a contraction of money. Then you have a slowdown in commerce. And then you have the whole cycle starting over again. So it's a you know, as far as like the debt cycle goes. So you have an expansion of credit, everybody gets happy, goes out there, you know, starts businesses, spending money, doing whatever. Then you have too much money in the system and you have a contraction of the money. And then you have this business or this debt cycle slowing down again. So with the gold standard, you had a business cycle with a fiat currency, you have a debt cycle that takes place. Well, when it comes to a debt cycle, it's a lot easier for the governments to deal with that because they can hand out stimulus packages and do all kinds of stuff to try and ease the pain for the people. But when you have a business cycle downturn, there's really nothing that you can do except for just go through the bankruptcies of it. So as these businesses fail and people, you know, fail on their on their loans or whatever it is that they had taken out, this all happens very quickly. It's quite devastating, but then the rebuild from that comes quite quite fast, right? So these business cycles happen very quickly and are very short-lived, even though they are quite devastating. The fiat, on the other hand, it takes forever to draw through these things. And the more that they try to alleviate the pain by adding stimulus and, you know, bailouts and stuff like that, they are actually prolonging the whole situation that's taken place. If they would just allow it to fail, people like, you know, feel the pain quite dramatically, very quickly, and then they can rebuild from that by doing the stimulus, by doing the, the bailouts and stuff like that, they are actually prolonging the pain of this of this debt cycle. So that's another thing that people would not be quite accustomed to is to deal with that short downturn without bailouts, without stimulus packages, without any of that stuff. And people are just not not accustomed to that. 
But in a gold standard, you simply couldn't do it. They just, you know, you wouldn't have the money to do it. In a fiat standard or a fiat currency, the governments can print up as much money as will and, and bail out, you know, bail out whoever they want. So that's like the major difference that ends up taking place from a gold standard to a fiat standard when it comes to the economy and then the cycles that happen within it. But then it gets even worse than that because if you have a gold standard like across the globe, right? Then you have something that really is, is quite unique that takes place that not a lot of people talk about, and that is the concentration of gold from around the world over to the most industrious nation. And that's really where the United States had reigned supreme during like the you know, 40s, 50s, 60s. The, we were the manufacturing powerhouse, right? So you think like World War II, we were selling all kinds of stuff to everybody around the world. They were sending us their gold. We were a manufacturing powerhouse after that. We made some of the most awesome things that everybody around the world would want to buy from us. So we were a manufacturing powerhouse after that, manufacturing some of the best quality goods for the world. The world was sending us their gold. And now as we got the gold, this is really where the problem starts to, starts to kick in, is that once we have the gold, then we want to start increasing our standard of living. Like if you enjoy this new money coming in, what you're enjoying is better clothing, better food, better, better surroundings, better rides, better everything, right? That's what you're enjoying when you're getting the new money in. Now, if you were to just hold on to that money and not spend it, well, then you would have still, you would be in a situation in which that you would be depriving the rest of the world. You would literally have to invest that back out to the world for them to have a currency. So here in the United States, as we were the manufacturing powerhouse, bringing all the gold into our nation and you know pushing out all these products, we got to a point where we wanted to enjoy our standard of living, enjoy this new gold. Now, we could have invested it back out to the world and not increased our standard of living, but that's not what people do. I mean, human nature is once you profit, you want to enjoy those profits. So as the United States started to enjoy this new found gold that came in from all the manufacturing that they were doing and pushing out there, they started increasing their standard of living. Well, when you increase your standard of living, you start raising the prices of everything because you're consuming more stuff. Right? As you consume more, you are starting to drive the prices up on everything because you're, you, and you're starting to drive the prices up on everything comparatively to people at the very end of the line. Because people who are at the end of the line who have access to this money or the last ones to have access to this money, they suffer the most as their wages haven't gone up, but yet the prices of everything has as everybody is enjoying this newfound consumption that's happening. So as this consumption starts to take place and driving the prices up of everything, the people at the end of the line, they suffer the most with it, either having to lower their standard of living or actually leave the entire area. As this happens and the people who have access to this money start to con or continue to enjoy that new money, they are importing foreign production to make up for the fact that they are no longer manufacturing it themselves. So now you got exporting of manufacturing taking place because of all the new gold that's coming in. The United States went through this exact thing. And when it got to about the 70s, we realized, man, our manufacturing base is leading. Right? We have this high standard of living. We are enjoying all this new money coming in and in increasing our standard of living. And now the rest of the nations are wanting their gold back. Right Now, whether they get it back through, you know, hey, I just want to trade in my dollars for gold or... We're starting to you know, figure out a way that we need to have currency in, in our system, and you have it, right? I mean, that's really what the United States was stuck at. They're like, crap, we're going to end up redistributing this gold back out to the rest of the world. Nixon said, no way, right? He cut that gold standard off and says, we're going to issue out this fiat currency, and instead of using gold, we're going to use dollars. And you don't have to have gold on hand. You can use U.S. treasuries, and that's really where the this transition ended up happening right there was the United States had to go bankrupt and redistribute out all the gold or they had to come up with a new currency for the rest of the world to use that was going to be in place of gold. And that's what they came up with was, you know, was Nixon severing the, the gold standard, pushing everybody out to a fiat currency and then using the U.S. treasuries as a form of gold, so to speak, on, on a global trading scale. So instead of using gold, you use U.S. treasuries and dollars. Now, you can produce as much currency as you really want, right? I mean, you can 
not necessarily as much as you want because you're going to be a limitation on how much debt you can go into. But the United States is pushing the limits on that right now. And they're distributing all this debt out to the world. That debt that goes out to the world is the currency that they use. Now there's plenty of currency for everybody to use. Right? There wasn't enough gold. There would have been concentrations and built, you know, and cycles and, you know, redistributions and stuff like that. But now we can have this continuous inflow of money without ever coming to a situation in which that the redistribution of wealth from the gold concentration needs to be done. They can just, you know, when the concentration of wealth happens, they just print out a bunch more and hand it out there. And that's the difference in it. So going back to a gold standard would literally mean that people would have to lower their standard of living. The most industrious nations out there would be able to get the gold to come into their nation. The most consuming nations out there, like the United States, would export all their gold and eventually find themselves in poverty. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. Uneducated economist, you let me know. That's why we can't go back to a gold standard.